I'd like to introduce our first speaker, inshallah, who is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, and he is uh, our Sheikh and beloved brother, uh, Abdullah Idris Ali. Sheikh Abdullah Idris is, is a well-known American Muslim public speaker, and he served as ISNES president from 1996 to 97. He co-organized the Canadian Islamic Bank Banking Conferences for the years of 96 and 97, and he is also on the board of advisors of the American Muslim Council and a past board member of the Council of Islamic Schools in North America. As an ISNA school, high school, uh, ISNA school principal, he developed and implemented Islamic and Arabic studies programs that were aimed specifically for junior high students. He, was, he has written various articles in Islamic Horizons and is a member of the ATP editorial board. His expertise in the area is specifically is in the area of Islamic education amongst youth. It is without further ado and my honor, pre honor and pleasure to introduce our beloved Sheikh Abdullah Idris. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. Sayyid. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alladhi lahu ma fi samawati wal ard. Yakhluk ma yasha. Yahabu li ma yasha u inasan. Wa yahabu li ma yasha u zhukur. أو يزوجهم ذكرانا وإناثا ويجعل من يشاء عقيمة إنه عليم قدير أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد أجين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أكيد ربيني السلام سدات في بلكان ويكا السلام عليكم Um, weather here, alhamdulillah, so it should have been better than that. Now, uh, they gave me 25 minutes to speak about this topic. And uh, in terms of sequence, I was supposed to come as actually after the Sister Adawiyah, before uh, Alwani, because that's the family, and then I'm taking the question of the youth. Uh, there are a couple of comments that I want to say about the title, even for it. it um, it is, the title they put for me is Crisis of Raising Children uh, here. Uh, and I'm a little bit sensitive about the, I don't like the word crisis. So I want to change it a little bit to challenge rather than crisis. Because crisis gives a very negative connotation. Uh, the challenge is what you have to face. That's what we have to face, inshallah. Now, uh, the verse that I started with when I said Alhamdulillah, I quoted the verse. Uh, from the Quran. For reference, this is in Surah Shura, and Surah Shura is chapter 42 in the Quran, and the verses that I touched on when I said Alhamdulillah, and I'll explain it to you, um, are verses 49 and 50. Basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in them, Wallahi mulku samawati wal ard. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who actually has sovereignty or power over the heavens and the earth. يخلق ما يشاء. He creates whatever he creates. And then he says, يَهَبُ لِمَا يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا He can grant, uh, hiba, actually children are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says he will give some people enough, females, and some will get males. And then, أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا And then some of us, alhamdulillah, like myself, um, most, most of your speakers here are grandparents, basically. And I know most of them, I don't know all of them. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. So, the gift of children is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, Allah says, get girls. Some people get males or females, boys or girls. Some get both. Allah blessed me actually with eight children, five boys and three girls. Um, and alhamdulillah, now I'm grandfather both ways. Like my son has a child and my daughter has a child. So I'm a grandfather both ways. Um, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Um, and then there are some people that Allah does not give children. Now, even these people, by the way, uh, one of the things the Prophet ﷺ says that if Allah does not give a child and some don't for whatever reason, then don't worry about it. Allah will give you children in paradise if you accept it and you are patient for it. And I tell people, I hope we have children in paradise. But children in this world, they're not only a challenge, they could be a crisis as was being told us. So if you don't have children, just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to compensate you with children in paradise. Because in paradise, you get whatever you want. And children of paradise are not the children of this worldly life. Uh, those are real children. So uh, people should not yani, feel at all that Allah did not, because it's a choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now, we know the first marriage took place in paradise between Adam and Hawa, right? When Allah created him, created his wife. And then when they were sent to earth, they had children. And the first challenge they took is these two children they had, Kael and Abel, you know, Qabil and Habil. And the um, dilemma that they posed to their parents uh, when it came to marriage, and one of them actually, and this is extreme now, from the beginning, one of them challenged his brother, and he said to him exactly this way. He said, if you don't do this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill you. That right from the beginning, children can go that far. And the story is known that actually Allah says, فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِي فَقَتَلَهُ يعني That's the, the, the extreme on this side. And then throughout the Quran, we have every, by the way, every case of your family, look at one of the prophets, you'll find yourself there. Every case. Like every case, you go from Adam to Noah to Ibrahim to um, uh, Yusuf, Yaqub, just go through the families. And even figures that are not necessarily like among the um, like lineage of prophets and messengers, like Luqman alayhi salam. And Luqman, um, some of the scholars, there is a chapter in the Quran titled Luqman, and this Luqman the wise. Allah introduced him to us by saying, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ Indeed, we bestowed or gifted him with wisdom. And some of the scholars say he's a prophet because Allah revealed for him. You know, uh, there are so many prophets. The prophet said the prophets um, even total more than 124,000 prophets. Not everyone was, we were told about them. So they say because he received wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has to be a prophet. And Luqman gave a template, actually, about the children and how we raise them and so on. Now, this is just to refresh you. The way I'm, I, I design this is the following. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you children, and alhamdulillah, Allah gave you a peace of mind, you are happy, you are contented, just say alhamdulillah, and ask Allah to keep it. Because this is the majority of the people in this category. But I can tell you problems with the children start actually before marriage. And this is what I say to the younger people. That before you get married, before you think of marriage, think of children. Uh, it's known that in Islam, the Prophet والسلام, says, when you uh, think of marriage, don't think of yourself. Think of what is going to come after the marriage. Now, and the beginning of it actually starts with the first pregnancy. Uh, many of the young people come to me because the minute a woman becomes pregnant, she goes through a lot of change. And then she changes in everything, physically, emotionally, she becomes moody, and they all have these things, and that's where people start the problems. And many of the young people can't take it. Then with the birth of the child, three problems develop. The first thing is jealousy. Like many, many fathers, Actually, they feel jealous about their own children because the, the loving wife and husband and all the heydays, all of a sudden somebody comes in between. And the mother becomes more occupied with the baby. So the man feels, I, I call it first jealousy, then alienation, feel alienated. And then the changes the wife goes through make him, and actually I have cases, by the way. Anything that I say to you, I have a template, a big, wide, uh, like, uh, handling of issues. Every case I'm telling you, I have been going through it. Yeah, and I have a case of a young man divorcing his wife after she gave the baby because he says she changed and she never went back to where she was. And you know the issues that we have. One person told me that she now ignored him completely, she doesn't know him, uh, and all of these things happen. This is where the children start. This becomes a challenge that uh, people really take. Now, then as we progress, there are three types of families, and you could be one of them. The family has a standard. A person gets married to a girl from whatever it is. But there are some other families that have more serious problems that we handle. When a person marries a woman, either he has children from a previous wife or she has children from, this is the step, father and mother. And this raises another issue. As a matter of fact, even now, there are cases of extreme problems that people have when you have your wife had a son, and then all of a sudden you bring this ch ch child, especially if uh, the, the previous father or the real father of the child leaves him and then the child becomes 20, 21 years of age and then he turns to his uh, stepfather and says, you are not my father. Uh, or in a case, one of them actually point blank told the man, you deprived me of my father. You came between me and my father. We have one of the saddest cases in California where a stepfather was killed by a son uh, of his own. Yani, and all of these uh, cases are, uh, that we have because um, 
the, the mother lost, like she divorced her husband, took the child, got custody of him, married another man, the boy grew up, then they start into friction with the father, and Irim intent on to kill him, he hit him with a pad or something, you know, second degree murder, but it's a murder. Uh, because these things happen, or the vice versa, that sometimes a girl, and now I have lots of cases like this, where a brother marries a sister who had a daughter from another husband, and then the problem is when she becomes a teenager and she wants to be of herself, she wants to be a, out of his control, and they have serious, serious problems that they go through them and so on. So let's take them one by one. The, even the standard family, as the children develop, there are this is what we call external, I mean, internal factors like the, the, the father, the mother, the stepfather. And not only this, even the relatives sometimes pose a real problem to the father. I tell you an extreme case too. Uh, I have a brother who sponsored his brother here, like ex sponsored his younger brother. Now the younger brother came here as children. The older brothers is not like he's not committed to Islam in any way. Now this is their uncle, and he's not only the uncle; he's the brother who sponsored his their father. Now the children don't want to deal with their father; they want to deal with their uncle because they can give them everything, even things that out of the way. And the brother is telling me that his biggest dilemma is not with people from outside, it's with his own brother who brought him in because that's where the struggle becomes within the family itself. Um, and that's another case where uh, it becomes more difficult for people to deal with rather than, because this is the uncle, and the older uncle and so on, and you can go for this and so on. Now, let's go for the standard family. The standard family is when people get married, they go through this, even if they pass the fairest stage, now, as the children grow up, education becomes a problem. And where to take the children, where they are going to get to the kid, and then the friction starts developing. Uh, when they are younger kids, sometimes even they reconcile it. So in our community now, we have this issue of the Islamic schools. I've been a principal school for 17 years. It's where I have gathered a lot of information about this. Now, the children who come to the Islamic school, basically, very few people. I remember in, in Toronto, I used to study every family, every case, and so on. Uh, we had about 400, I had a large school, 450 student, students. They come from 182 families, to be exact. Now, out of them, there are only 34 families where the father and the mother are in full agreement to bring the children to the Islamic school. And they are agree on it, they see the benefits from it. This is only 40, 34 families. Now, about half of the families, they are in the school because there is a fight between the husband and the father. The father wants them in Islamic school or the mother, the father doesn't want them. So the schooling became an issue, and it becomes a real issue. And then they come with all kinds of problems, all kinds of frictions and so on. Now, even these were still within what we call a safety zone, because they are struggling over the environment that we are in. The problem becomes when they split the children, because sometimes they make a deal, and one family did this. They said, okay, the, the mother will bring some of them to the Islamic school, the father will take them to the public school, and vice versa. Now, there is another case within the school itself, about maybe 17, 18 families. This is where right out the mother is against children coming to the school, and the father wants the children to come to the school because he thinks if they don't come for his Islamic school. So education becomes the major issue immediately after that. Now this is still when the children are small, when the children are not in the picture. The minute become teenagers from a sweet 16 upwards, now another set of problems comes in. That's where children start challenging their parents. And the challenge actually takes the forms of the following. One, what to study, what to go. So as some parents, and you know this, they want to impose the, on their children everything in their life. What to study, you know I have a, a girl, a girl, who went up to third year in medical school, and all of a sudden came out and she said she doesn't want to go to school, she doesn't want to study, because she's not, and she's a very bright girl. She's there not because she wants to be there, because her parents want to be there. After the third year, every year she had a fight, and finally she gave up. And now she's studying philosophy, and she says that's what she likes to study. Now, my personal, personal experience, I told her I have five kids, so I have all these samplings. And sometimes when you sit with your children, I know parents who have more than two or three children, they know this, for five children, everybody's a different human being by themselves. When they used to come to me, I used to ask them a question. I learned one thing, I read it a long time ago, uh, about Imam al-Hassan, and when somebody came and asked him, he said to him, what is the value of a person? Tell me my value. He said to him, your value is in two things. Remember this in what you do best and what people need most. You know, just think about it. If you do something better than anyone else, 
and people need it, you have a very high value. So I asked my son or daughter, alhamdulillah, or five of my children, three of them now finish university, two of them are university, that's the question I post for them. They come to me and say, Abi or dad, what do you think I should do? I say, what do you do best? What do you really do best? You think you really can do it, and you are very comfortable about it. He tells me so and so. I say, what people need most? And I'll tell you, it's very funny, because when you talk to children like this, you discover a lot of things. First, they open up. And sometimes you get the shock of your life, because you see that your children like things that you never thought about. And but at least it gives you a chance to talk to them and see what they are. Now, one of my children, alhamdulillah, that's what, who spinned me. This is the last one in the family. He was very spoiled by his mom. Uh, the, the unfortunate part of it is the tallest in the family. Like, it would be amazing. This is the biggest person in the family. His mother treats him like a baby and we struggled all along. And all of a sudden he came to me and said he wants to go in sports. He wants to play basketball. I said, son, you can't even do anything in basketball without going to university first, even if you want to be some basketball player or whatever it is. He said, no problem. I came to know that there is a course in kinesiology or sports medicine. I want to take it. I said, is there something like this university? He said, yes. I said, go ahead. Alhamdulillah, now he's in third year. He's maintaining what's called the B standing, B plus, so that he can go into sports medicine. He got the scholarships. He's playing basketball. He told me he's in the athletic team in central Missouri. I said, Alhamdulillah, mashallah. At least he found his way out. Yani sometimes when you do this with children, resolve that issue of the uh, education. That's A. You want to give me the note? See, that's why I didn't even look at my notes, by the way. Because if I do this, it'll be here for two hours. Now, five. No, no, I'll stick to the five. Now, the, the, the major issue now comes in marriage. When children come home, um, and there are, there are four types of people I'm dealing with. Wallahi, this is exactly what happens. A father calls me. He says he wants his son to get married. I said, what does your son do? He says he's a professor at the university. I said, but why you tell me? Why do not he talk to me? No, 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 in our family, it's the parents who decide on it. I said, but yeah, he let him talk to me. The father says, no, that I'll be the talking, tell me who you have, and he wants to know the people. And then one day, this man, I said, okay, bring your son with you. It's a professor at university, a PhD holder. He walks behind his father, and he says, well, I have him in our culture that the father does this for me. So one day, I took him aside. I said to him, are you sure of this? He said, well, what can I do? This is what we have. So it's reminding me of the old days. I come from the Sudan, by the way. And if I tell you how you got married, you will laugh. Because until now, I tell my wife, you have to repeat our marriage. I was teaching at the university at that time. We came, sat down. My uncle and my aunt sat down. All of a sudden, came and said, Mabro, congratulations. I said, what? One of my students with me said, Khalas, finished? I said, finished. I said, oh, at least you got a wife. Forget about it. In some of them, not only this, by the way, in Sudan, and this happened to one of our brothers right here in America. He's teaching here. He said he came home. His father told him to go to his room. He went to his room. There is a girl sitting there. He said, that's your wife. You already did the engagement. Halas, that's your wife. Take it or leave it. And you can't say anything. Now, this old days, I don't want the kids to be scared here. My children did it differently. <laughs> My daughter came to me one time and said, Abby, 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 have a surprise for you. I said, what's the surprise? She said, she got engaged. I said, what? Who engaged you? No, no, Abby, we are just waiting for you. Waiting for what? To stamp? Get out of my face. No, no, Abby, I'm serious. I said, what is serious? She said, oh, she saw this boy, exactly the boy I like. A religious boy, Mushari face, great answer. I said, well, you really like him? She said, how do you know him? Oh, no, he's my cousin. I said, alhamdulillah, at least your cousin, not from somebody from outside. And that's the way we got them married. Alhamdulillah, they are living very nice. Now they have a daughter. Yeah, and sometimes these things happen. So that becomes another problem. This is the main crisis in the family starts then. And then, of course, there are these children who rebel against their parents. Uh, young people don't hear this, but in Chicago, we discovered that 17 young boys went and married behind the back of their mothers and fathers. And that's sad, because marriage is the most yani, uh, awaited moment for a mother, especially. And when you make it that joyous occasion to be the saddest, the most miserable time of your parents, it's dangerous. So I started developing this theory called the star. Actually, yesterday I finished Juma prayer, I came in, this man came running after me. Sheikh, 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 there is a serious problem. I said, what? He said, there is this girl who wants to marry this boy. Her father says of my dead body, the family doesn't want her, the girl doesn't want to go back home. I want you to bring them to marry them. I said, brother, forget it. That's not the way. 
خلاص اي سيد وات تو دو اي سيد ستول وات دو يو مين ستول سيد جيف مي ذا تليفون نمبر اوف ذا فادر جيف مي ذا تليفون نمبر اوف ذا مادر ليت اس دو سم توكينج ذن وي كان ريزولف ات وان باي وان اي سيد ار يو شو اي سيد يس اي ديد ات بيفور اند ليت مي تيل يو ذا كيس ذات اي هاف ذيس يونغ مان كيم وذ ا جير ان ماي اوفيس وذ ا ميري سيرتيفيكت اكزاكت لايك ذيس هي سيد امو اور انكل اي وونت تو جيت ماريد اي لوكت ات هيم اي سيد بات اي نو Uh, what about your family, your mom and dad? He said they are against it. My mother said over my dead body. My father said, if I marry this girl, he, is not, he won't, doesn't want to see my face again. I said, and you want me to get you married? He said, yes. I said, forget it. I won't do it. He said, yeah, Sheikh, haram. I can do haram. I said, go and do haram. Uh, I said, this is not the way to get married. Then he said, well, and then after he cooled down and the girl got angry, I said, wait a minute, give me the telephone number. I called the mom. It took me a long time. She called me shaitan. She called me all kinds of things. And I kept telling her, begging her, that these kids might go and do this. There is nothing wrong with her. Subhanallah, listen to the scenario. The mother has two children, two children. One of them, she went and picked, hand-picked a girl for him and married it to him. Now they are divorced and the worst enemy for her. The other boy who rebelled and came to me, I went to the mother. Now the girl that she hated, now she had her best friend at her old age, exactly the opposite. And the boy actually, every time I talk to him, he says to me, Sheikh, Jazakallah khair. I would have made the biggest mistake in my life. Because after I convinced his mother, convinced his father, we got them married, now Allah exactly rewarded her for that. So my advice to the parents all the time, this is one of the most critical thing, is that please don't just turn your children out. There are lots of people, lots of children. By the way, you'll be shocked someday. Now, the last thing that I wanted to say before, is this slide to tell me that my time is up? Okay, the last case, listen carefully to this. And I'm going to finish with it. There are so many brothers who are married behind their wives. Some of them have children. And the day the wife or the mother knows this, that's a disaster. Actually, I have a case. A sister is now in mental hospital. Because the day she knew her husband had been married for five years, he had two daughters from the other girl, and this man completely hid it, becoming the biggest shock in the family. And everything was shuttered. Their children doesn't want to see him. They threatened to kill him, like, exactly like this. And then they betrayed their mother and all of these things. So please, all these things, if you want, uh, I know they gave me the red light now, but all of these issues, we thought them one by one. And that's where the, the families are. This is not in every family. As I told you, the majority of the families, alhamdulillah, and I said, if you are in that zone of safety and security and Allah given, say alhamdulillah. If you are running through this, please seek help from people. You can be helped in any case. And yeah, don't keep it for yourself until everything that goes from this. I'll say, 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 I'll